Hello. Hey. Hello. I just have a limited amount of capability left to, um, to speak left, so I might um, take the um, back row today and not talk that much. Okay, that's fine. I'm guessing there's not any big roadmap updates. Um, no, nothing um, significant. No. There's okay. some minor movements around containerization, but yeah, that's, that's it. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. 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 Let's give it another minute, see if we get a Mar to join today. All right, there's a Mar, AMR. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get rolling here. Um, Lucas, uh, just a heads up, I'm gonna actually move security to the end of the uh, weekly update since you have a little bit of a longer um, update today, if that's okay. Understood, thank you. Great. All right, so we'll start off with uh, PTL updates. Amar, I know you've been out on, on PTO, so <laughs> I know you're probably still catching up on things. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just uh, got back. Yeah, so uh, not too, my, too many updates since the last time. I think we uh, flushed out the uh, 4G side a little more. Um, thanks, Shruti and uh, Shruti for the help there. Uh, yeah, so I think we have enough to get started. Uh, we had an initial sync with uh, Eugene from uh, Freedom5 on who is going to work on the project from their side. Uh, I think we're still waiting to hear back from them or like, uh, sorry, I was on PTO, so I didn't follow up after that, but Eugene is gonna be the main POC, but I think they're gonna try to staff a team um, behind the effort. I don't know if Joey is here, but. Uh... 
Yeah, no, Joey is not here. Yeah, so I'll follow up on that and then um, get back to this group by next Monday. Okay, yeah, good. so that's primarily the only update. Uh, that was the MOCN side. Thanks. So uh, now that Freedom Fi has become the Nova Lab, so will there be changes after that? That's the thing that is not clear. Um, yeah, this happened when I was at P on PTO, right? So uh, hopefully not, but uh, I, I still need to chat with uh, Joey and Eugene again. Okay, sure. All right. We'll move to release updates. Govin, Daji. Yep. Can you see my share? No. It's coming oh. up. Yeah. We there see it. it is. Yep. Now we see it. Okay. Uh, so for uh, 1.8 release, we had a few outstanding issues that needs to be backported from mainline into 1.8 branch. So uh, as per the last meeting, um, all the fixes are uh, backported. Um, and we, I think there is no outstanding issues as of now. Uh, please correct me, uh, Max or others. I think there are one or two that we need to fix. And um, so yeah, there's, it's not our last release candidate as far as I understand or as far as I see. Okay. Yeah, so those uh, issues are backported and uh, once it is backported, uh, uh, there is some retesting involved uh, on both ARM as well as x86, that is work in progress. Um, so there was also some orchestrated AGW, AGW related uh, compatibility test. This is also resolved uh, as per NILS. Um, uh, between 1.8 orchestrator and with 1.7 AGW, uh, Yogesh, you said you will get back on that. Uh, if you don't have an update, Hello. we can discuss in next release meeting also. Yeah. I will catch up in next meeting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you are not going to support that combination, we can update the 1.8 release notes as limitations. Sure. Sure. And on the DevOps side, um, uh, Tim and Shubham are working on uh, listing the ARM CA build job status in Magma CA dashboard. With all the backported fix, looks like the ARM build is broken. Uh, this is the latest update from Tim. So I'll be uh, taking a look at it today. Uh, so, uh, and do a one round of tests once the compilation succeeds with the SRS run tester. Um, uh, regarding the OVS and third party packages, uh, uploading in the JFrog. Initially, we thought of adding new CA jobs as part of 1.8 release itself, but uh, the time is very less. So for now, we have decided to manually upload the packages into JFrog and go ahead with 1.8 release. So the CA automation will be done after 1.8 release. And uh, there are a few uh, cosmetic changes like changing the JFrog location in these Ansible scripts, that is with me. Uh, so uh, this will go along with the documentation from Shubham uh, about uh, the Docker installation, Docker-based installation procedure on any systems. So uh, this change, uh, this will happen before the next release meeting. So I'll be working on that. Um, so apart from all the DevOps activities, there are a few performance tests on, on 5G side. Yogesh uh, asked for a week timeline. I think uh, it should be mostly done before the next uh, release meeting. Uh, I think uh, uh, we are on track uh, as per Yogesh. Um, on the 4G performance test, Patrick Lynn and Sujay, uh, they jump in and uh, they are going to use Mblosoft traffic uh, generator test suites instead of Ixia, instead of Spirant. Uh, so they have asked for uh, two weeks timeline, which will be end of this week, Friday. So we'll be getting an update from Suja in the upcoming uh, release meeting as well. So um, regarding the feature test, uh, 
there uh, so when meta was working on this project there, there were some teravm test so there are no takers for this test either we have to put it as part of the release notes as limitation and, and we, we are also trying to see the overlap with uh, 5g test cases uh, that is uh, maintained by uh, wave labs and yogesh confirmed that some of the all the 5G TeraVM tests are covered in the test suite. For 4G TeraVM, Sujay said uh, he will take a look at the test plan and uh, hopefully he will give an update in the next release meeting whether uh, this is partially covered or fully covered. So those kind of details. Whatever is not covered, uh, we have planned to put that in the release notes as limitations. So, um, so the official containerized HW 1.0 image test. So this has to be done on both ARM and x86. Uh, x86 is done mostly by uh, WaveLabs team. Uh, I have to do one round of test uh, by building it fresh and running it on a fresh ARM instance in AWS. So I'll be doing that this week. So we need to be just a basic sanity test, right? Meaning? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. For for Docker based test. Uh, is going to be sanity level test from Wave Labs, and that will be documented in the release notes as well. And on the doc documentation uh, side, uh, Wave Labs team they created a PR and updated the feature list uh, as part of 1.8 release notes. So I will be adding the uh, ARM enablement of also as part of that. And limitations uh, in the next release meeting, uh, we all will discuss what has to go in that list. And uh, that will be the uh, final release notes, uh, which will be uh, going out. Uh, considering all these uh, timelines, we have tentatively come up with August 26th as the deadline uh, uh, for uh, 1.8 release. Uh, so far, we haven't identified any major blockers. If things go smooth, if all the test passes, we can make a release on 26th. So, uh, any comments or questions? Yeah, up to the two um, issues that need to be backported, I think they are uh, potentially blocking, and or they they sound to be blocking. Um, I would have the question if whether it might be good to just um, to have it formally approved to go through TSC vote once with the plan to test less and put it at um, limitations or is that under control of the releasing team? I'm not sure what the process there is. If we should formally do a TSC vote once that it is okay or if it's just okay. Yeah, it, that's a good idea, Max. It's good to get a voting. But uh, uh, Sujay, uh, Sujay is here. So uh, he can actually give a confirmation whether it's partially covered or or fully covered or nothing is covered. So Sujay, do you want to come in? Do you have uh, any yeah. uh, comments here? On the TerraVM, uh, there's nothing much I could do there, so it's not covered. Oh, OK, so you're still looking into it, or you're? Or no. Are... no, right now I'm just focusing on the test, finishing the test spaces. OK. Yeah, I, then... I had a, I looked at it. I I checked with uh, the solver team, but then um, I don't think it would be possible right now. Though. And even the, I think I couldn't. I didn't get any favorable things from them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then then that comes to the uh, table actually. So what what we can do here? Um, so can we mention that TeraVM 4G features are not covered uh, as part of 1.8 release and capture it in release notes as limitations. So anybody want to second that uh, thought? I, I would suggest to make it even broader. I think we had um, a lot of points above where we um, wanted to put something as limitations, like um, missing the a test here and there. And um, maybe we uh, want to make it more broad so that you, the uh, releasing team can decide what um, to test and what to limit or what to put as limitations that might give you more freedoms um, compared to just TerraVM for 4G. 
Okay. Then, then respective of stakeholders, you can actually comment whoever is owning. So if you want to bring out any limitations, uh, whoever in the call from Wave Labs, DevOps, you can comment what has to go as part of limitations. Yogesh or Daljit, do you have uh, any I, I don't think we need to list the limitations here. We just need to understand that there can be limitations and releasing team can decide. Um, so do you want to discuss now or in the next release meeting, Max? What is the expectation? I, I would um, right now suggest to vote that um, you can limit the scope of testing and put it as limitations and you should talk to the relevant people if it's um, acceptable. But um, I would um, suggest to vote for somehow a blanco check that allows you to put stuff as um, limitations. OK, so uh, on top of the mine, I mean, I have only two items as limitations. Uh, so without knowing the list, uh, should we go ahead and get for the approval here? Is it fine? So uh, one is the 4G uh, TeraVM test, and the uh, other one is manual upload of the packages into JFrog. So yeah, we test. Um, we don't test a lot of features. We don't test um, 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 carrier Wi-Fi gateway, as far as I know. We, so there, there's a potentially a lot of gaps that were tested last time. And okay. It's more than that. Okay, I think it's it's good to discuss at next release meeting and update the. Uh, TAC Slack channel and get the voting done on that day itself instead of discussing now. Okay, um, just if if you don't get acceptance for this plan, um, you will um, hit the uh, you will break the release target. Just um, it would yeah. um, just okay, but it's your plan. Yeah, um, so I think uh, so. Kendall, uh, we want to get a TAC voting on the limitation list that has to go as part of 1.8 release notes. So I will uh, send an update in the Magma TAC Slack channel and uh, uh, we can get the voting done on Wednesday. Yep, we can do the voting um, via Slack or email, so that's fine. All right, yep, thanks. That's it from my side. Thank you so much, Govin. Next, uh, DevOps updates, Tim Shubham. Uh, so right now we are testing the ARM CI process. So VMs are automatically generating, but when we are trying to build the ARM images, the build is crashing. So Govind is looking into the that. Once that is fixed, then the CI process for the ARM will complete. Second we thing we are also testing that we, this time we have to publish same Docker images with multiple architecture. So names are actually the same. So we are just testing that, how that will happen in the artifactory. So we are doing some tests right now. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Uh Testing, Tian, is there an update? Uh, yeah, just a few update uh, for testing. Uh, we are currently working on the on the uh, 4G federated integration test and and uh, we have uh, uh, 22 um, test cases uh, is ready to be merged and also we are working with um, with a CI to to um, how to say to enable it in in the CI dashboard uh, also we are working with um, uh, with the govin uh, for for containerizing s1 ap tester and 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 also test uh, testing S1 IP tester and uh, and um, IGW in the container on uh, on uh, ARM architecture. So for the 5G SA tester, we're still in a very early stage, and then we uh, that means we are still brainstorming and and working on the design phrase uh, documentation, and so we don't have any update for that uh, for the moment. So that's all from my side. Um, I would have some questions regarding S1 IP containerization since there was um, a similar 
um, try recently that is a pull request that is currently open and that pull request has the issue that it um, does not containerize the network topology so it still requires you to have three vms or to have three machines or to something like that but no. uh, it just puts the application inside of docker inside of the vm yeah, Max, I had a discussion with the engineer who worked on that PR. So it's not a three node topology. It's a single node topology with all the three uh, components of S1 AP test running on the same node. Uh, so there was some basic tests done on the x86 machine. Um, so I was trying to run the same thing on ARM. Uh, so I'm not there yet. So my initial goal was to run it in a three node topology and fix some of the build issues that I'm facing currently on S1 AP repo. Um, so I will work with open Air interface team uh, to replicate that topology and then converge from three node to single node. So that's my current understanding. So, uh, so the goal is to run it on single node, not three nodes. Mm -hmm. Right now, all container run in host mode and use host network. I think um, the S1 AP tester um, container SSHs into the um, traffic channel VM. So, so it's um, really dependent on the three node um, architecture as far as I understood right now. We can go through that, but I would like to understand how to mitigate that and not to replicate the same pattern that was created there. It's... Okay. Um, it also has hard coded all three IPs or four IPs of the three VMs in code. So it requires these networks and they are not built in Docker. They are built by um, AWS or um, Vagrant if you want to repl um, replicate it. Okay, I mean, there is a disconnect there. So we can take it offline. So as far as I know, there should not be any VMs involved in that S1 AP test. The goal was to remove that VM dependency and uh, vagrant dependency. So um, we can have a separate discussion and this is a post 1.8 release item actually. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't accomplished in that pull request and it's not- Yes, yes, that. that's right. Yes, it needs some work. Yes, it's not complete. Yeah, yeah. as I said that uh, OIT team is working with the Govin to, to solve that uh, problem. Yeah, we can report apply later, yeah. I just would like to understand the plan to mitigate that I am really afraid that we end with the same problem. And I think that's the issue we should tackle first or we should understand first how to um, get rid of the VM. Containerization is the easy part. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Um, by the way, is there a roadmap on when to get a roadmap for 5G S1 IP testing? Or... Yes, we, we, we are working on that. And in the next uh, TSC meeting, we, I will present that. Okay, good. Yeah. By the way, I already sent you the, the link for the draft version. Please take a look at that. We'll do that. Thanks. Okay. All right, great. Um, skipping outreach, skipping security. Um, well, not skipping security, we're just gonna move that to the end. Um, any feature development work that anyone would like to discuss? Okay, then we can go to C++ migration, Rashmi. Yes. Yes.
Okay, thanks, Rashmi. Thanks, Rashmi. Uh, next, we'll go to Nils Basilefer. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Let me quickly share my screen. So I will not again go through the complete list, uh, just the three big uh, points. We have uh, building with Basil, testing NCI, and developer experience. Uh, what we worked on, on the in the last iteration was to evaluate um, rules Docker. This is a library for building Docker images with Bazel. Uh, rules Docker is a valid candidate. This was also tested manually on ARM. And the question if, is if we go forward with this or if we say the Docker files are sufficient in the current state. Uh, the only thing we are planning to do is to additionally evaluate if this approach is agnostic enough to also build uh, Red Hat based images. Um, for testing in CI, <clears throat> the, we already have a workflow to run the integration tests on Bazel build artifacts. And uh, currently Lars and Chris are working on using remote caches there. And they just gave me the current number. Uh, they were able to, with the remote caches to execute the integration test in three hours, 10 minutes, which is a nice improvement uh, to the compared uh, something like four hours, uh, which we have currently on CI. Uh, and also in progress is to execute the test with Basil from the Magma test VM. So currently not on the list, uh, but planned for the next iteration is um, the developer experience. So basically an overview, what is uh, currently happening in Make, what, is, uh, what needs to be done to achieve the same with Basil, and with this have a better overview of what is still open and is needed for the final switch over. Any question? Then that's it from my side, thank you. Thank you, Nils. All right, data path, Nick, Yogesh, any updates there? Nothing from my side, uh, can help. Okay, thanks, Yogesh. And roadmap update, Max, anything to share? No, except for some uh, minor movement towards um, containerization and away from um, Debian packaging, um, nothing, no, nothing to um, bring up here. Okay, thanks. So now we'll loop back to security, Lucas. Great. Um, so I will share my screen. All right. So uh, the agenda today is to talk about where we stand in the security roadmap. Um, I prepared this document, which I'll share the uh, URL for in the chat. That is a GIST, which doesn't permit um, comments. Um, and um, in the future, I'll put those in a Google Doc so people can submit comments. So this document is titled Open Vulnerability Review because it addresses uh, the, the top item in the security roadmap, uh, closed known vulnerability. Um, <clears throat> known vulnerabilities include uh, uh, both uh, basically depend upon items uh, and disclosures. Um, <clears throat> and um, those are pretty broad categories. So we see that individual items um, such as this one um, can rise to the level of top level um, roadmap um, items. Just to clear up the confusion, this uh, is a subcategory of this. 
in the near future, I'm going to have a, a consolidated roadmap for all security items, in addition to this broken down one that just covers the more fine grained items. So it'll be easier to see both the big picture and the small picture. But for now, um, <clears throat> the important thing to know is that we're going to be discussing from here down to here. Um, <clears throat> and really, we could talk about the whole thing because we've made really substantial progress on everything in the in the roadmap. But we're going to be drilling down right here. <clears throat> um, before I go on, uh, uh, any questions or comments? Uh, okay, so uh, I'll dive in here. Um, <clears throat> We uh, currently have uh, 36 open Dependabot alerts. Um, we've closed 126, so we're making um, good progress on the big picture. Um, <clears throat> on the uh, Go front, there are 23 open and 51 closed items. Um, and uh, there's a, a important work in progress to really you know, close this whole thing. Uh, there is a open PR. Uh, and um, the next step in this PR is to figure out how to test it. Um, so um, the request is to um, get help on, on testing. Uh, and I wonder um, who um, would be a good resource for that. Or what's a good way to approach uh, testing these items? Any suggestions for how to um, find uh, find the right resource for uh, getting the testing addressed? I think um, I will do the, I'll do the first one, uh, you know, as a higher priority, better approach, but then I think we should fall back to the second. Um, testing is really hard in our world, and sometimes that can make our progress um, slower than necessary. So is there a consensus on, on moving forward and, and letting uh, tests arise naturally uh, if we, um, if we don't have a way to explicitly test these items. I think it's not very covered since it is um, about Helm provisioning and the container or the um, thing that does the Helm provisioning. And I'm not sure if that is tested in CI. Mm, it might need a Kubernetes. I don't know how much overkill it or how um, resource hungry it might be, but yeah, it um, probably would be a good thing to test at least regularly. Yeah, um, that sounds like a reasonable goal. Um, should I, who should I work with to move that forward? At least as far as the security okay. part. Goes. So, uh, Lucas, you can work with me on this. So okay. I am familiar with this Helm and Kubernetes stuff. So, uh, let's start. 
uh, if we need some help from the community, we can send a Slack message and bring more people in. Okay, sounds great. Yeah. Um, so once we get that done, we're going to close um, really the most important um, of the Depend of Auto Arts and be able to uh, declare victory on this larger project. <clears throat> Uh, next up, uh, the NPM items are, um, we're just about ready to declare victory on that. These two things were stubborn and I finally knocked them down last week. Um, <clears throat> there is one conversation to be had about um, uh, 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 how to run end-to-end -end tests. Um, given that there's a change to Puppeteer. Um, and um, it is a low risk change to Puppeteer, but it does affect a lot of critical stuff. Uh, and I wonder about comments on that, suggestions for how to approach that. That is here. So um, <clears throat> Fritz commented wisely that this change does affect Puppeteer. So um, there's a lot of stuff at risk. At the same time, running all the end-to-end -end tests will be pretty laborious. Should I move on from there and just leave that as an open item to discuss in, in chat? given crickets, uh, that's what I'll do. Okay, so short answer on all this, once we figure out how to do the testing, we can um, consider these uh, known vulnerabilities to be well under control. Um, <clears throat> there's an item to discuss about uh, closing Python upgrades, blocked and testing Debian packages. Max um, read the, um, the notes and, and commented that it's actually not about the 1.8 release, uh, but about uh, this this PR that just got merged. Um, yes, I actually just rebased the branch with the Python upgrades. So with this PR, it's now possible to test the uh, Debian package release automatically. And uh, the Python upgrades are looking good and will probably get merged um, tomorrow. That's great. Um, it's, uh, yeah. It's not on the release branch, so that's only on master. Yes, and I think that is an important thing to note that a lot of these items are are coming soon, but are not in the release branch. Um, so that suggests a maybe a one point eight point one release, whatever comes after one point eight, will be um, maybe security have a lot of security uh, upgrades. Um, <clears throat> Next, uh, we have these disclosures. Uh, <clears throat> the current status is we have um, we have closed nine. We have five currently open. We have these two items that haven't been started, and we're focusing on these right, these three right here at the moment. <clears throat> Let me go into more detail. Um, <clears throat> This open SSH item, uh, Tim asked why uh, this is blocked on, on Tim and um, can we just wait on the switch to cloud artifactory? And I wonder um, about uh, comments and whether that would work. I don't know what the timeline for cloud artifactory right now is. I know that we, um, he prioritized that in favor of continuization, but um, the, uh, the roadmap might still be fast enough or the plan. I don't know. What's the um, timeline for that? I, I would guess if that's, if that's um, following on Basil, it would be like eight weeks, something like that. I don't know. It um, has a lot of overhead, and having that cloud artifactory also doesn't mean that we can shut down the old artifactory immediately. So there is also the migration plan to be understood. And um, so yeah, that's um, yeah. I think right. it needs to be discussed more. Or... 
Um, so the next question was um, getting some Tim time to work on this, uh, short of uh, using basalification. Um, Uh, 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 Tim, uh, Sorry, what is the context here to, to basilification? Uh, it has to do with the artifactory uh, switch. No, um, basilification is just replacing the package building with um, potentially other package building, which might or might not happen soon or not, but that's completely independent. And um, yeah, Nils, you are right, basilification does not interfere here. Uh, Kim, you, sh should we just um, sync up after this conversation? Let's yeah, do it uh, move to the next item. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of ground to cover and we shouldn't stop on any one item. Next, um, there was a substantial delivery uh, here uh, and um, Shruti, Should we aim to get that into 1.8? Mm. Um, should we aim to get that documentation into 1.8 or um, or the feature is the feature completely in 1.8 or not? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so I will add that to the um, task for um, secure deployment documentation. Uh, just making a note. All right. Um, and then um, later on down the road, when this is um, tested and reliable and well-known, um, we can discuss a architectural change um, to change the default, um, but we don't have to um, do that right now. And we don't really have the information. Um, Max, you um, suggested um, um, that it, that should maybe be a, a proposal, um, and um, that seems reasonable. Uh, but uh, I, I think um, we should wait on the time when it's you know relevant because so many things can change between now and yep. then. Sure. Cool. Okay, so. <clears throat> EPC and backhaul data uh, unencrypted. Uh, this is the, um, the item that we have touched the least. We've talked about it. We've made a plan for what happens next, but we haven't started um, doing the labor. Um, <clears throat> where are we on having the resources to, to do this? Is it wise to try to do this right now? Yeah, I mean, I had some discussions with uh, Praveen uh, on the data part. 
but I think I'll restart that uh, discussion. Uh, there were some back and forth uh, things we didn't get concluded, but yeah, I think I'll restart it again. Cool. Um, so I will make a note that you'll restart those discussions. Maybe what, what would the next checkpoint be? Should I talk to you in a week or two, something like that? Yes, yes, I will reach out today. And you know, uh, this week I'll, I'll try to summarize the findings here. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let me see, are you on this? Yes. Okay, so great. Um, and we have these uh, two items that we haven't started on yet. I think we're probably booked up, but people should just be aware that um, there's a going to be coming. Next, um, there's, um, a, sorry, go ahead. May, um, I added another item some days ago. I don't, um, you might, um, it might be um, not so nice since you're unprepared potentially, but um, the latest um, item in the security backlog is um, some outdated binaries that we um, compile and package that are out of sight of Dependabot, like a GNU TLS from 2014 that we installed on every um, Magma installation. And I think that would be worth to um, invest time into that. As, um, since, yeah, I think there is a lot that is out of sight of Dependabot. Yeah, that should get more visibility. And um, yeah, um, GNU TLS from 2014 has a huge bunch of security vulnerabilities, as you <laughs> would think. Um, yeah, I, I saw that issue, uh, and um, I will um, I'll put it on the front burner. And um, I, I think it's it's kind of similar um, to the uh, the disclosure we had a, a few weeks ago um, about functionality about uh, uh, security debt in unmaintained features. Um, so every time we find one of these spots, whether it's really um, old, high risk stuff. Um, we find you know a, a nest of vulnerabilities. So I, I will um, put that on the front burner. I'll emphasize it. Um, <clears throat> next, a quick conversation about uh, where we are in the roadmap. That's what this roadmap status uh, says. Um, <clears throat> so we've just talked about where we are in closing known vulnerabilities. We've talked about uh, these two uh, uh, items in particular, uh, and found that we're basically um, in uh, in good shape and making good progress on these. Uh, next, uh, the dangerous workflows in CI um, item uh, in the roadmap. Um, we've actually uh, covered a lot of the original things we found, um, but a new uh, inspection, a new review, found many new items. Um, so this will uh, pop up. <clears throat> the SBOM is in, um, it's basically done, except for that the ability to download the JSON was broken. Um, Linux Foundation uh, IT says they fixed that, and I have to go check in on it. Um, and the next item to come up uh, is secure defaults. This is kind of a design goal. Um, documenting secure deployment um, fits there, and that is um, started. And then I think. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to um, look more at other other defaults and other ways to have the system be secure by default. We haven't started this, uh, and, and let me say that I I welcome um, ideas and visions for where we should go next because we are you know getting the all the all the known items and planned items under control, um, so we can we can start to set goals for for future security improvements. Um, and that is it from me. Thanks, Lucas. All right, uh, over to you, Max, for proposals. Yeah, I think this is the same uh, proposal as last week, uh, where we um, discussed to get rid of the um, source folder. There was not yet any um, feedback from the um, relevant persons that invested a lot of time into these, um, into this code, and we might still wait for them to be able to speak up and to say what they would like. So nothing new here. All right, 
That brings us to the end of our agenda. Is there anything else that people would like to discuss? I would have one question regarding proposals. Um, we would plan for our next iteration to have a look to um, rewrite the LTE integration test to run versus an environment where the last uh, Debian package is installed. Um, the question is, um, is there an opinion? Should we have two workflows, one versus a Debian-based uh, environment and one versus a make? based environment, is this worth, uh, should we create a proposal for that one or is the overall opinion that we should switch because this is what I, I heard a couple of times. Any opinion or feedback? I think as, as long as you just add, um, that doesn't need a proposal, the switch over or making required might um, require a proposal, but adding new CI jobs, I think it's always welcome. Better. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the question. Should we aim for two LTE integration test workflows or should we aim for one that only goes versus the Debian um, created package? But you are right. We could start with um, creating the new workflow and then again, create a proposal to ask if we should cancel the old one. Yeah, if it has disadvantages, we can drop it. Oh yeah, and thank you. Maybe three actually when we also have an automated workflow with the containerized CGW. Okay. That also sounds very beneficial. Yeah. Anything else? Everyone, have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.